We got permission to walk up on top of the Temple Mount, so we're on our way up. This entire area is controlled by the WAF. The Israeli authorities have almost no control unless it's a security situation. The policemen are largely Israeli Arabs, uh, and uh, or Arabic speaking Jews at most, but Israeli Arabs mainly. Uh, and the WAF can do anything they want, including if they don't like it, the violation, they can even confiscate a camera or something. You can photograph buildings normally, that's okay, but not people. Please, no witnessing or giving out tracks, they'll throw you right off. They'll just throw you right off the mountain if you try anything like that. Um, we just stick together, we have the teaching, we see the Temple Mount, and I'll explain the things together with Ronnie. Ronnie, try to see. Okay, let's go through history just uh, for a moment. Can I borrow your book for a moment? Oh, thank you very much. Take a look, okay? Rectangular in shape. This is all Mount Moriah. It was shaved off by King Herod the Great. He builds a retaining wall going all the way around it, right? 488 yards by 288 yards. Hold on, Hold on, Okay, everybody can hear me? All right. Uh, the platform built by King Herod the Great. The temple was here in an inner courtyard in that area just over there, approximately where the Golden Dome is. We are now in an outer courtyard, which is actually called the courtyard of the Gentiles. Gentiles were allowed to come upon the Temple Mount. It was one of the wonders of the world, or something very fantastic. First of all, it was the only temple in the world where there's no statue. Right? Now there were also now there was also another inner courtyard just about over here, and then there was a sign in the international language at the time, which was Greek, which said in Greek very plainly that if you are not of the faith and you go beyond this wall, your life is in your own hands. It doesn't mean that someone like a god is going to come out and kill you, but it means that God will strike you dead before your time. All right. Now, just on the southern wall, just about over here, would have been the portico. All right. Mm -hmm. Once again, we're going to see later on a presentation concerning the temple, uh, and then you'd be inside a number of courtyards, and of course, the holy of holies was just about over there. All right. Now, let's go back in history. The temple is destroyed in August of the year seventy. That is the end of Jewish rule. The Romans. Therefore, for the next 230 years, allow the Jews, one day a year, to come upon the Temple Mount to pray by its ruins. They can never rebuild another temple. Why? Not because the Romans are nice guys, so that the Jews will never forget who did it to them. This tradition goes on for 230 years. The beginning in the 4th century from the Christian Byzantines. And the same tradition continues for another 300 years. They allow the Jews to come up to pray by the ruins of the temple on the anniversary of its destruction, Tisha B'Av, but never to rebuild another temple again. And then comes about Islam. I'm not going to talk to you about the wonders of Islam at the moment, but according to the Quran, they believe that Muhammad flew here on his way to heaven, and he prayed by the exposed stone where Abraham was to sacrifice Isaac, and as his horse ascended together with him to heaven, left a hoof print on the stone. Therefore, they build the Golden Dome. The Golden Dome is not a mosque. It is a monument, the site of the ascension in heaven of Muhammad. Okay? All right. Okay. Um, so, now, at that point now, the Muslims say to the Jews, you can't come up here anymore. This is our holy spot. Go find yourself someplace else to go. So therefore, since they can't come up here anymore, a portion of the western wall over here now becomes a very important spot for the Jews to go because they can't come here anymore. All right, so they remember the destruction by going to one of the retaining walls. That's the Wailing Wall that you see downstairs. Okay, history continues. In the year 1099 AD, the Crusaders arrive. And when they arrive, they come into the cities, they conquer the place. Baldwin I declares himself the king of the Holy Latin Kingdom. They take over the Temple Mount area. They turn the El Aqsa Mosque, that's behind me over there, into a palace for the Crusaders. And of course, later on, to house the Templars. It was an, a priestly order of knights that controlled the Temple Mount area and became the custodians or escorts of pilgrims coming to the Holy Land. Those are the Knights Templars. And they turned the dome building over there to my right into a chapel. And they called it the Chapel to Abraham. Crusaders are here until July of 1187. After that, it goes right back into Muslim hands once again. And it remains that way until today. Accordingly, King Hussein and his dynasty, his family back in Jordan, they claim to be direct descendants to Muhammad. So therefore, they've become the custodians of the Temple Mount area. In other words, any kind of repairs or something is done by way of the Hashemite kingdom. Okay? Um, 
Um, any questions so far? None whatsoever. Okay. Now, another thing, you will notice in many, many places that we're going to, um, a lot of marble, a lot of granite, you're going to see, you're going to see Crusader capitals, you're going to see your Corinthian capitals. These are all been pilfered from many buildings that are around this area that were destroyed in previous buildings and used to build up what was on top here. You'll notice that in all the mosques. By the way, these two buildings here are the oldest still standing Islamic buildings in the world. They've never been destroyed since they're constructed. They've been repaired here and there, but never really destroyed. All right? Okay. Any questionis? Okay. This quadrant over here to my left, straight in front of us, was the area of Solomon's portico where the early church most likely met in the book of Acts chapter 2 and beyond. It was from there the Apostle James was martyred by the Herodians, thrown off this area being Solomon's portico. Here is the court of the Gentiles. In front of us is what is today the Dome of the Rock. Let us understand something about Hashikutz HaMeshomem. Hashikutz HaMeshomem. Shikutz HaMeshomem, the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel, is actually an Aramaic term, not a Hebrew term. Meshomem in modern Hebrew has the connotation of boring, but its ancient meaning is desolate, desolation. The word shekets is where you get the derogatory Yiddish word, not Hebrew word, but Yiddish word for a Gentile woman, shiksa. It literally means a slimy reptile or a slimy snake. Remember, the serpent beguiled the woman. Satan in his mode as dragon is the persecutor. Satan in his mode as deceiver is the shekets. Shekets. Okay, sheksim. The word sheksim occurs many times, many places in the Hebrew scriptures. Many times in many places. We normally translate it and into English, or even I would say mistranslate it, your detestable things. Your detestable things. You've played the harlot under every green tree, and you have blasphemed my name with your sheketzim, your detestable things. This is normally applied to Baal worship. Baal worship. As we explained, the Hebrew term for husband, master, and owner is Baal. In the book of Hosea, Yahweh was to be Israel's Baal. The Canaanites had another Baal that rose from the dead every spring. But the two become confused, particularly in the days of the prophet Elijah. Okay? So when you understand Hashikutz HaMeshomem, where that term is normally used, it is to do with Baal worship. You begin to understand where Antichrist is coming from. He will come in his mode as a deceiver, as a shekets, and try to take God's woman. You understand? He tries to take God's woman. In Jewish thought, in New Testament thought, James' epistle was written to Jewish believers. It's the oldest book of the New Testament. And he calls worldly churches adulteresses, James chapter 4. Worldly churches adulteresses. When Israel went after other gods, the idolatry was called adultery. Daughter of Zion, you played the harlot. James resumes the same theme that would have been familiar to Jews in the first century in his epistle. <coughs> Daughter of Zion, you played the harlot. Antichrist will attempt to take God's woman, Yahweh's woman, Israel, the bride of Christ, the church, by spiritual seduction. And there'll be a confusion of identities as in Baal worship. There have been many abominations of desolation on the Temple Mount. Josephus records when this was destroyed, fulfilling the prophecies of Jesus and Daniel, the Romans put up pagan ensigns where the temp holy of holies had been and began worshiping them. The early believers thought this was the abomination of desolation. In the second century, after the second Jewish revolt of Bar Kokhba, we studied this up in Kisadia, the Emperor Hadrian levels almost everything down to the bedrock and builds a temple of Jupiter. Jupiter was what the Romans, the planet, the biggest planet, what the Romans called the Greek god Zeus. Zeus was again a corruption of Theos. Theos is the word for God. Zeos was simply a corruption of Theos. Much the same as, as a common noun, Allah is a word for God, but as a proper noun, it is the name of the Arabian moon god. You understand? Confusion of identities because it's the same word. Allah, Allah, Theos, Zeos. 
until the Temple of Jupiter is built. That is the second abomination of desolation. In the fourth century, Constantine's nephew, Julian the Apostate, attempts to repaganize the Roman Empire. And he wants to reverse the prophecy of Jesus that not one stone will be thrown down upon another, so he actually tries to rebuild the temple. And all these mysterious fires happen, and calamities happen, recorded in Roman history. It doesn't happen. This is Julian the Apostate, the nephew of Constantine the Great, who tries to repaganize the Roman Empire. Time goes on now, and we come to the seventh century, where the Dome of the Rock is built. Sometimes identified as the Mosque of Omar, the original Mosque of Omar was west of here, in the old city, but not this. This is the Dome of the Rock. It is argued without support that it is the rock where Abraham sacrificed Isaac. Can't prove this. Nonetheless, you'll find oblation rituals and things mimicking or imitating the Jewish temple. What Islam does, and what is always done, it takes elements of Christianity, elements of Judaism, and elements of Zoroastrianism, the monotheistic religion of ancient Persia, and tries to use those things to monotheize the pagan religions of ancient Arabia. Muhammad was born in Mecca, grew up near Mecca, where the Hajj already existed. His father's name was Abdullah, the servant of Allah. The well of Zumzum, their holy water, was already there. All of these things already existed. He simply attempted to monotheize it. The Kaaba was already there. He went into the Kaaba, and there were 360 stones, one for every day of the year by the lunar calendar. He removed all but one and said, there's one true God, which he attempted to identify with the God of Israel, but it was in fact the Nabataean moon God. Here to my left, to your right, is the Mosque of Aqsa. Again, the custodians have officially been the Hashemites, the royal family of Jordan. Jordan was created by the British. It is not a natural nation. Most of the nations of the Middle East, including Iraq, including Lebanon, Syria, they were all created by the British and the French, the League of Nations, by Europeans. Okay? Israel was the only exception. It was created by the United Nations, who now condemns it. Uh, <clears throat> the Hashemites are a Bedouin tribe of which Muhammad was a member. The Hashemites are the true descendants of Muhammad the true ones. The Saudi Arabian Wahhab are not. They see themselves as the custodians of the shrines in Mecca and Medina, the two shrines. But in more recent times, Islam has begun to claim this as the third holy place of Islam. This was never believed popularly until relatively modern history. In here, the grandfather of King Hussein, King Abdullah I, not the second, this is his great grandson now in Jordan, was assassinated by the Mufti's men from an absentee family of landlords, the Husseini family. He was the Mufti, the chief clergyman of Jerusalem, the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, because he tried to make peace with the Jews. The Jordanians tried to make peace with the Jews. In 1970, when Yasser Arafat tried on Jordan, or he tried on Israel, the Jordanian, British trained and equipped Jordanian legion massacred between 12 and 15,000 of Arafat's men in 12 days in Black September of 1970. Now, we come ahead now to the next abomination of desolation. Hadrian builds the temple of Jupiter. Okay? He builds the temple of Jupiter. Okay? Then comes the Mosque of Omar. Uh, we, the Dome of the Rock was renamed the Mosque of Omar. We want to show you something on it. It is one of the possible locations of the original temple. Again, as we pointed out yesterday, there's a minority opinion the temple could have been over here that's not popularly held. The next best guess is right where the Dome of the Rock is. But on me? We read in the New Testament that Yeshua, Jesus, is the monogenes, the only begotten of the Father. We are told in 1 John that which denies the Father-Son relationship is Antichrist. You have a quotation from a Sorah in the Quran, inscribed up there, which says, God is not begotten, neither does he beget, God has no son. 
Now what does First John tell us this means for the believer? That's actually what it says. So you have this structure where the temple stood on the Temple Mount saying God has no son. Okay. Come up to the front. Come to Lydie's. Okay. Now this is very important. I want you always to remember this. In the Nakano Gate. And we are standing right now on its approximate location. This would have been the Beautiful Gate. If, if the Beautiful Gate was indeed the Nakano Gate. If the Beautiful Gate was the Shonar Akameen, the East Gate, it is over here to a left blocked by the trees, um, <clears throat> but that is today in the Islamic library where you paint the window. But what had happened on Palm Sunday, Jesus would have crossed from the Kidron through the East Gate and come to this area here, okay? They expected him to make a right. <coughs> you see where that mosque is? That is the approximate location of Fortress Antonio, the northern per per periphery of Fortress Antonio. They expected him to make a right and depose the Romans. Instead, he comes this way, where we are, turns left, goes past the entry to the temple, and goes towards Solomon's portico, and deposes the people selling do doves, the money changers, people taking bribes for the lambs, and so forth. He makes the left here, and instead, he says, you've made my father's house a den of robbers. Judgment begins in the house of God. It did not begin with the Romans. God is always much more concerned with the sin among his own people and in his own house than he is with the world. God will judge the politicians, he'll judge the Hollywood pornographers, he'll judge all that stuff. But judgment begins in the house of God. He did not make the right to the Antonio, he made the left and went that way. Okay, we're standing approximately where the Nakano Gate would have been. This way, please. Do you see where the green slopes down? That is a cleft. <coughs> there is, in fact, an, a seismic fault line that runs from under that cleft across the Kidron and under the Temple Mount. The last time there was an earthquake was again in 1927. That's the last time that it happened. It is not unthinkable that an earthquake could happen again with devastating consequence of a fairly significant <coughs> magnitude on the Richter scale. At that cleft, the high priest had to look across through the beautiful gate when he sacrificed the red heifer. The question again was the beautiful gate, the counter gate, or the east gate, the Shara Akamim, which is basically in front of us on the back of those trees. Okay? Those stones are Herodian. The foundation stones are Herodian. They would have been the ones that were there at the time of Yeshua, of Jesus. So we come to the second opinion, not of Dan Bahat, but of Dr. Asher Kaufman. Asher Kaufman would have placed the Holy of Holies right where you're standing. Okay. The Muslims call this the Dome of the Spirits. This would have been, according to Kaufman's view, the location of the Holy of Holies. Now, it is not unthinkable also, one possible scenario is an earthquake. Another is, the Antichrist makes a treaty. The Jews accede to give Palestinian state in the West Bank with Jerusalem as the capital. But you have some kind of internationalization of Jerusalem, where a Jewish temple can be rebuilt here 70 meters north, 70 meters north of the Dome of the Rock. If Kaufman is right or can persuade people he's right, the two could, in theory, exist side by side. If Kaufman is right or can convince people is right. There are multiple scenarios how this can happen, but it's very difficult looking at Revelation 11 not to conclude that there will be a tribulational temple because we also read in Revelation 11, and I can't open the Bible up here, mm -hmm. that the outer court will be given to the Gentiles. You understand? It's measured and the outer court will be given to the Gentiles. That is another possible scenario if Asher Kaufman is right. If Dan Bahad is right, that thing would have to go if a temple is going to be rebuilt. Okay? Now, there is another possibility we mentioned. A minority opinion. A minority opinion that it was actually on the other side 
That has only come into vogue in the last five years, although there have been those who speculated about it. It's not a popular point of view. The only other scenario that I could conjecture as a possibility would be through the ecumenical interfaith movement, some kind of sharing of that premises. You already have buildings in Canterbury Cathedral in England. They have the Chapel of Anselm, where they take out the cross and they wheel in a statue of Buddha. Where they take out the statue of Buddha and they wheel in a Roman Catholic altar. It is multi-faith. If you could have multi-faith worship in there and somehow reconsecrate it as a temple, that is does not seem politically likely. I only mention it in passing as a possible scenario. But those are the main points of view, okay? Those are the main points of view. What is important is every abomination we've had so far, the Roman ensigns with Josephus, the Temple of Jupiter, okay? Third, the... Uh, the Temple of Jupiter, the Dome of, of, of the Rock, each one of these things is a type or shadow revealing something of what the abomination will be. The Roman ensigns, political dominion by imperial powers, pagan powers over the house of God, okay? Zeus, the temple of Jupiter, the confusion of the true God with the false one. God has no son, the dome of the rock. Each of these things reveals some aspect of the ultimate abomination of desolations, the Shikutsa Meshomem.